back in a way. If you have her from the building here, let's go. Here we go. This is Prince, the one and only. And right. I'm here with uh, my friend Poopster, the also, uh, one and only. And we're here again with uh, with our friend Rotten Socks at Rotten Hello. Hello on Twitter. Yeah, thank you for the shout out. Shout out! Woo! Uh, are you yeah. done with your pasta? Yeah, Rotten Real was e- Rotten Socks was eating some pasta. I mean, and I was just eating some DiGiorno, some some good old DiGiorno, man. So we're all pseudo Italian or American Italian American tonight. I had yeah. Indian. Well, oh well, Indian. Poopster had Indian to throw it off. So yeah, I want to apologize well, first off um, because last week we did not broadcast. I don't know if uh, there are many of our listeners that know, but I started a new job working at a hotel here in Hollyweird. Yeah, and prostitutes and, you know, et cetera, et cetera. No, no, I'm joking about the prostitutes. But So we did that last week. We figured that uh, Poopster and I needed a break, and we got that break, whether we wanted it or not, because I was sleeping so there we have it. Oh, <clears throat> such a wonderful excuse. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> I was actually, um, I was having mad sexual intercourse, uh, sexual relations, because I'm just that virile. <laughs> oh, okay, <laughs> sexy boy, whatever you say. <laughs> I can dream. A boy can dream. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> So anyways, uh, what is going on this week? I mean, we, we've got two weeks really to cover since uh, since our faithful listeners did not have, uh, were not graced by our presence last week. So what's new in the world? I mean, I've been looking actually, and there's not a lot, I think, in the world of crypto, but what's new this week? Uh, I don't know where you're getting your news from. I, I think it's been a, a, an interesting couple of weeks. Uh, yeah. With cryptocurrencies, we're just seeing a complete shit show with Ethereum. Oh yeah, yeah, they, yeah. They pretty much admitted that Ethereum 1.0 uh, failed, and uh, now they're going to launch Ethereum 2.0, which allegedly uh, you will need to run simultaneously. Everybody. Uh, Hun- dozens, I don't know, hundreds of uh, different separate machines all at once for it to work. Huh. So, yeah, right. I um, didn't actually hear anything about this Ethereum thing. I, I usually don't count Ethereum news <laughs> into my repertoire. Not necessarily uh, because ne- I shouldn't, but... Neither do, neither do I, but, uh, you know, the algorithms with social media, they keep popping important. up with random stuff. So I I read it and and I was like, ah, fuck you. Um, <laughs> and also they had this famous, popular, I don't know, DevCon. It's called DevCon, D E V. Oh yeah, DevCon. O N conference. And allegedly, this journalist from I think it's CoinDesk called Le Quen. She's she's a prestigious or popular journalist and. I believe she got called out when she was on a stage uh, because she did some uh, article that was saying lightning is not that good mm. and Ethereum people just call her out and pull her off the stage and oh, they're good. doing this drama on Twitter. DEFCON knows what's up. Yeah, uh, and the thing is, 
Ethereum uh, Vitalik was the guy that came up with the uh, Bitcoin maximalist term. Mm -hmm. And now we're seeing that Ethereum are becoming Ethereum maximalist, so to speak. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. So this double narrative is playing very badly for Ethereum people. And it's leaving a very bitter sweet uh, flavor in our mouth. Yeah, now now that I am thinking about it, I did hear um some uh some stuff about Ethereum recently. Specifically, what is it here? I'm I'm reading. Uh CFTC chairman confirms Ether cryptocurrency is a commodity. So, that's a large uh you know, milestone for them that they're that they're actually recognized as something, but I still think it's a clusterfuck, honestly. I mean, obviously most of us do too. Um, it's probably one of one of the one of the worst things that happened to cryptocurrency is the token movement. It delegitimized so many of of the blockchain projects because it it uh, it basically it did. It, it didn't give enough information, and it hooked new users users on to thinking that Ethereum tokens, ERC twenties, were actually cryptocurrencies with their own blockchain, which they're not, obviously, is, is, yeah. is, as we know. So it it yeah. muddied the waters in the same way that Bitcoin Cash and, and subsequent forks did with Bitcoin, um, which which hurts us all in the long run with cryptocurrency ultimate adoption, because it doesn't really inform users who aren't initiated, so to speak, what this or that actually is, which which is a terrible thing. So, yeah, I mean, with, with this uh, this infighting within the Ethereum commu uh, community between, you know, what would it be ETC and ETH? Is, is that what you're referring to, Rotten Sox? Uh, or is no, this different? No, no, no. Uh, yes, no, 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 it's different. It's just these journalists from Coindesk, uh, that came up with an article saying that Lightning wasn't that great. Mm. And I believe she got called out on a stage because they didn't like uh, the article or her narrative with Coindesk when right. she was doing some journalist work out there. And it, it was embarrassing. And I also read a, a thread of another guy that um, had made some bad comments regarding... I believe it was Zcash, Zero Cash. Right, right, right. Uh, that's another privacy coin. Yeah. And he went to Adepcon a few months ago or years ago. I don't know. I, I, he didn't even disclose which one specifically. The point being, uh, she got, he got called out. He got expelled from the conference and they also held his passport. Oh, wow. <laughs> Yeah, no, so Ethereum people are becoming the clowns in the room if they weren't already. <laughs> yeah, well, most of us knew what was, what was up, <laughs> but, you know, uh, it's it's only fitting, I guess, but one thing, you know, I do understand the importance of these smart contracts, but the fact that they've been, they've been bastardized and misused into people believing that they are, are currencies on their own which they're not. Um, they're, they do have, I mean, smart contracts are not useless. I'm not saying that. Um, you know, there's a lot of applications uh, as far as, uh, uh, you know, employment, contract employment, which, which kind of sounds dumb to say, but, you know, even the U.S. government has contract uh, contractors on their books. And for that to be governed by a blockchain, a, you know, in the guise of something like uh, the Ethereum blockchain would be extremely logical. But to rely on something like that as a, as a, a crowdfunder or whatever else that it has uh, emerged at so far, which people have sunk, I mean, hundreds of millions of dollars into, is, is probably, it, it's definitely bad for, for the crypto, crypto ecosystem, I believe. You know, that's uh, that's my opinion. Yeah, I'm and ultimately, um, those who believe that Ethereum is the only cryptocurrency that has smart contracts, oh yeah, uh, uh, are not that mm, I guess immersed or involved with the space because if you go to Bitcoin, 
there is a smart contracts as well. Uh, yeah. Bitcoin Core has this time lock uh, function, and what it does is that I can time lock with with a block ha height saying within two or three thousand blocks, I want these coins to be spent, to actually be spent. And until those three or four thousand blocks happen, those coins are locked in. It's an it's a time lock thing that you put in the code. Yeah. That's a smart contract in and of itself. And the multi sig thing that you can have multiple signatures for a single private key. So if there is no enough uh, quorum with the seats, with the actual signatures, you cannot spend the coins. Exactly, yeah. If, if everybody in the organization, let's say, you know, if this was a, a, a use case in action, let's say uh, the managers of a certain company paid someone to do this or that, and the time came for the contract to mature, and uh, the person did not complete that work, or they didn't complete it to, to the consensus of the manager's approval. So not all of the managers approved uh, multi -sig tran the, the, multi the release of that multi-signature transaction. Um, that's essentially a smart contract at, uh, at its core um, you yeah. know, in, in Bitcoin. And yeah. Not to mention just Bitcoin. There are, there are so many other coins that have implemented smart contracts out there. Even um, non-ASIC coins like Raven, Raven Coin, for example. Um, yeah. They have some pretty elegant, uh, elegant ways of, of, of producing the smart contract uh, system. Now, I'm actually yeah. not sure, uh, Rotten. Are there any privacy coins that have that have uh, used? the smart contract basis in their system. I know Dash, I think, has it, don't they? N not that I know of. It's mm. not my expertise. Uh, you are aware that I'm into Monero. But yeah, to the yeah. best of my knowledge, uh, there is no smart contracts, although there is Tario coming. Tario is like a sidechain. Mm -hmm. I, I see Tari like the blockstream of Monero. You know, right. blockstream keeps uh, doing research and uh, creating that sidechain that Liquid is right. um, for atomic swaps or smart contracts or whatever you want to call it. So it's like a, I would say Tari and blockstream are like, we're pumping your project. Uh, we're not Bitcoin or we're not Monero. We're our own thing, but it's right. a side chain. It's like Counterparty based almost, off right? Those projects. Remember Counterparty on? Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it was kind of like that, right? Yeah. Um, and regarding tokens, I don't know much about smart contracts, but there is a cryptocurrency that I. I don't respect because I think still at the end of the day, most of them, besides Bitcoin and Monero, mm -hmm. um, are sheep coins at the end <laughs> of the day. This is true. Um, but Stellar, for instance, uh, Stellar Lumens, they have the token uh, functionality. So I keep right. saying, well, e ERC20 tokens have very, very bad uh, image and public uh, image and whatever, or word of mouth, so to speak. Why don't you try Stellar Lumens that they're not that, um, I would say, they don't have as bad reputation? Yeah, Lumens, uh, Stellar's actually been, in my mind, with the research that I've done, Stellar has been... It's been useful, and I, I enjoy I enjoyed the white paper and the development that's been done on it. But it yeah, seems no, to I'm, have I'm, not yeah, it's not, it hasn't really caught as much speed as as one would have expected it to. And I'm not sure why yeah. that is. Well, there is different theories. Um, I think one of them is this uh, bear market. Uh, ever yeah. since we went up to 20k that everybody was doing coke and molly and everybody was <laughs> going crazy with prostitutes yes we go no. all that bubble bursted on everybody's face and we came down to 3.5k and all these bear market has um 
erased a lot of shit coinery and uh, traditional investors that invested in shit coins. Right. And they, they've been pulling out all that capital. And that capital, at the end of the day, ends up with the most liquid, robust, um, stable, uh, the hardest to crack and attack, which is Bitcoin. So it has mm -hmm. never been a better time to become a Bitcoin maximalist because it pays and it's mm -hmm. stable. It's the hardest to crush and it has the biggest and the strongest network effect because it was the yeah. first one. Uh, is the one that keeps being discussed by the Congress, by the Parliament, by even the President. Um, none of these other altcoins have been discussed on the public institutions or by public exposed persons. So it gives solidity to the project. Uh, putting that aside, um, the, uh, the, the reason I think Stellar doesn't have as bad shape is because the main guy, whose name I cannot recall right now, um, yeah, yes, so sure. something, whatever, uh, this guy um, fan down about left him. Ripple, actually, and they forked off uh, with an intention of uh, creating a non-for-profit uh, kind of a stellar of uh, Ripple. So let's say a stellar is like the grassroots version of Ripple, even though both can be very shitty or crappy um, from their foundation. Um, one is controlled by central banks. Yeah, we all know we have a bias I, against Ripple. I mean, all exactly. of us. Exactly. <laughs> central banks invest the money into it. Uh, central banks have a say on what it's done and what is getting done or, or what's the future of the centralized fund. Uh, while um, Stellar is more community driven, they actually recently uh, cut off the inflation pool, uh, looming out, uh, because if you held more than 100 uh, Stellar, uh, you mm -hmm. could sign up for the inflation pool. It's kind of proof of stake. So oh, you right, could get okay. a percentage of that holding weekly, automatically. Yeah. And they recently say, uh, and merge the code, um, the commit on github.com and they're stopping that inflation pool once they meet a, a certain number of tokens I issued see. or sent via the inflation pool. So it should bring up uh, the price because there is no more, let's say, fake tokens getting issued just because you bought something and right. you're holding. Well, speaking Although of, uh, the, I'm sorry. The stupid, just to finish my train mm -hmm. of thought. Um, although the the bad image is going on because they keep a dropping endlessly, I do not agree with the key base thing or the blockchain dot info a drop. Any sort of a drop is it's nonsensical for me. Uh, free money doesn't exist. I was going to actually money, mention that. that that's, that's where I was going. Yeah. So, I mean, air, airdrops you think are, are negative towards... Uh, actually, to to preface this question, uh, I'd like to say that, that Keybase, if you guys are not aware of, of <clears throat> the platform Keybase, it's sort of a decentralized uh, Slack, if you will. If you guys are familiar with the platform Slack. <clears throat> and anyways... They're giving a um, they're giving free airdrops of of stellar lumens basically every month um, to facilitate adoption of this currency, which which is you know obviously a, not to pun but a stellar currency. <laughs> so uh, my question is uh, uh, actually because I'm forgetting Poopster's even here. So Rodden and then Poopster, do you I'm think? Here. Airdrops are are harmful. Poops their go first, please. Yeah. Um, I like it actually. I'm waiting for it from Keybase. <laughs> so Five more days. Waiting for his airdrop. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, yes, uh, I mean I, personally, I, but 
think of think about the the bigger picture here. Is is it more harmful to have people who aren't really invested in this currency or just going to throw it away? Is that going to really facilitate ado- adoption, or is it just going to, you know, a fly by night sort of thing where where it, it it's not? I think it helps. You think it does? Because uh, it's like a little nudge to get people to use it. You know. Um, Back into the uh, Bitcoin early days, I mean, people well, just kind of like that's true. You know, throwing it around, buying, ton, you know, ten thousand Bitcoin for a pizza. You know, that's how you get people to use it. And when you have enough people, you know, critical mass, and it's out there, then it becomes more momentum. It's yeah, a good argument. I, I must, I must admit, uh, Rotten. What do you think? Uh, I think my take on it doesn't change at all. Uh, I think it's all wrong and mm-hmm. it's bad. Uh, and it, comparing it with Bitcoin is like comparing apples with pineapples or apples with, I don't know, whatever else. Right. Uh, just because with the Bitcoin case, it was different. With the Bitcoin case, what we had is thousands. Uh, as we have mm-hmm. in the Holy Roger and altcoins and whatever. Right. Um, and with Bitcoin, tipping, the, all that the, fun stuff, yeah. Yeah, and with Bitcoin, the 10K story with the Bitcoin pizza, whatever it is, it was actually spending the coins for an actual thing. Uh, here, we're just having free money, and there is not such a thing as free money. Is yeah, money. There's already it's a money, base though. behind this airdrop, so I, I get what you're saying. Yeah, it's 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 yeah. they're trying to uh, essentially generate uh, free money. But yeah. if you think about it, it's it's you know you say apples and oranges, but when you think about it, they're both fruits. <laughs> Fair enough. Man. Okay, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> the point, I guess, it works. I mean, you know, and. As goats, you know, meat fruits, is meat, they, uh, they Whether go bad. it's baby meat or it's it's horse, meat is meat. Yep. Uh, <laughs> and no, yes, it, it, can give, it can give some projects as a seller or any other project that does uh, an airdrop an opportunity, as Poopster was saying, to uh, bring some awareness to the project or mm. what they're trying to achieve or accomplish. But... I don't think at the end of the day, and you can see the statistics. I saw them from a guy called Jam- Jameson Law. Uh, he's, uh, he's one of the guys from Casa Hotel. It's one of the products out there for Bitcoin. And he right. posted this chart showing that um, most, the vast majority of the people that receive um, Stellar A drops through blockchain.info, I think mm-hmm. was another portal doing airdrops. Yeah, they did. Uh, dump them. People are not holding on to them. No, They're yeah, because no one... Them. I don't think anybody really knew the scope of what Stellar was trying to offer. Um, you know, I remember before any of the airdrops, really, when I first when it first kind of um, emerged on Bitcoin Talk, um, you know, it seemed really promising, and, and, it, and it just seemed that, there, that they didn't have the voice or the the means necessary to, to bring people to the project because we were lost in a sewer of similar projects that, uh, you know, had nebulous uh, organization goals, et cetera, et cetera. And, uh, you know, it just kind of emerged at that time that didn't necessarily uh, propel it like the ones that were before it because everybody thought it was the same thing, you know. So um, maybe maybe it could work out differently this time. I, I'm not sure. Like I said, I've always I've always really been interested in Stellar as far as uh, as far as the the platform and what it can do. I but, like Stellar actually. I that? like Stellar more than Ethereum. Yeah, well, of course, yeah. But I mean, <laughs> I like Raven probably more than Stellar and Ethereum. But we won't even go there. <laughs> Oh boy, this is turning too much shit coinery for my temple. <laughs> it, it, it's okay, we can talk about it. Shitcoin I mean, wars! Just because it's not the first doesn't mean it's shitcoin. Yeah, everybody loves Bitcoin because the first has value, but. 
No, no man. No. Anything not Bitcoin is shit coin. Even Monero. Even Monero is a shit coin. Yeah, right. Okay. I mean they're all they're all basically they're all based on what what Bitcoin Well built on. Oh, so. although And Bitcoin let me is the big daddy. Up you know. there for a second. Monero is not. <laughs> Oh, no, no, no. The code base for Monero is obviously not. I mean, Kryptonite yeah, is yeah. a different animal altogether. I think Kryptonite's really amazing as as far as an algorithm goes. Uh, obviously, yeah. the the history is pretty nebulous. Uh, if if you guys know about, it. I think we've actually talked about it before. But um, it is a beautiful piece of code, and uh, you know, ring signatures and such, the way that it works. So it has staying power. It it's not a a shit coin per se, but um, yeah, no, no, no. I, I say that uh, there is a saying: hold hold strong opinions loosely. Yeah. So uh, anything that I say is not a hundred percent. Oh, if you say it otherwise, <laughs> I'll kill you. No, no. <laughs> but, but I end up in. Uh, I always end up in the middle. The, let's say, let's suppose this real quick. Let's suppose that. Um. Bitcoin is like, uh, just a f- disclosure. This is not the real truth. This is not how I see things. This is just a r- gotcha. random analogy. Bitcoin is like the Nazi Germany mm-hmm. back in the days. And Monero is like the Soviet Union of Russia and all right. those other countries. And these two projects keep saying from one end, you're a shit coin, blah, 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 blah. And the other side is saying, uh, but we're fungible. You're not. We're private. You're not. You're public ledger, panopticon, blah, 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 blah. Right. And these uh, 24-7, 365 attacks on each other, and you're in the middle of them, it helps me a lot to s- see what they get right and what they get wrong. Yeah, because a lot of emotions fly back and forth and, and, and sometimes they don't get the arguments correct as far as because they're just trying to think about ideals and not the technical aspects of, of, of how these particular currencies are built. You yeah, know, and, and we're this, humans. Yeah, yeah. We're humans backing up actual code. Uh, Bitcoin or Monero don't sleep. We do. They don't eat. We do. We're humans. We're emotional. Those coins are not. They don't care about us. And and we fight with each other like we were the code. So, yeah. No. It's true. <laughs> we, we fight like we we are the code uh, when it comes yeah. to this kind of stuff. <laughs> this is the truth. Well... So um, uh, we had some Bitcoin talk, and we're probably going to have more, or cryptocurrency talk. We're probably going to have more, but uh, I want to lead into our our weekly segment here, which I don't have a plan for, so we're going to come up with this on the fly. We'll wait for the music to start, if it does. Oh, come on. Play my music, please. Oh, no, I turned the volume down. It's right. Okay. And now we have the asshole of the week. Your asshole of the week for this Thursday. I don't know, I'm getting a little extreme consciousness here because uh, it's basically all that um really hurt. So, um, I don't know. Asshole of the week, guys. Could what do you I, think? Could I mean, I I'm thinking Donald Trump, really. Or but somebody or an entity or something? Anybody. I mean, really, the only person I've heard about this, this week is Donald Trump, and I, I don't want to sound like cliche and, you know, jumping <laughs> out of the bandwagon. But, man. Um, b- well, that's a candidate every week. <laughs> every yeah, week. Exactly. Exactly. That was the He's an asshole every week. He's like the every easy season. target, the low hanging fruit. Yeah. <sighs> uh, we we also have the Chinese government. Oh, the Chinese government. Yeah, that's some fucking clusterfuck shit right there, man. <laughs> yeah. <let's, laughs> 
<laughs> Let's nominate the Chinese government for a Asshole of the Week. You guys have won. You can come to the States here and collect your prize if you'd like. It's probably not something you that. want. I'm going to nominate the, uh, the, the rioters in Hong Kong, man. I mean, they're destroying their whole city. I mean, you could riot. I mean, you could, uh, what you call it? Uh, On the flip side here, we have Poopster's alternative uh, <laughs> opinion. Yeah. You could do the, what you call it, the staging of the uh, uh, get-together to demand democracy. But, man, they're destroying their own city, though, man. I mean, yeah, you're making a point, but you're destroying everything. I mean, that's my point. Uh, infrastructure, man, you know. They didn't build okay, it. Okay, be sorry. Um, before we continue, mm -hmm. just to get to know what we're deciding on. Sure. Are we going with Trump? Are we going with the Hong Kong protesters? Or are we going with the Chinese government? You know, we can go with all three, really. But uh, my first nomination would definitely be the Chinese government. Uh, in in, and that would have to probably cascade down to Donald Trump who actually insinuated that you guys do what you want um, but maybe they're all yeah. assholes man I don't know well yes subjectively yeah subjectively yeah um, uh, that's a weird well, one really. I, I, let's do a coin join <laughs> okay why am I such an heir well okay uh, let's do a coin join and talk about those three. Um, okay. Those, any of you want to start, or I can start? Or? Well, you know, no, you, I mean, you can start. I mean, I, I understand why, you know, aspects of all three could be, could be nominated, and, and we could do a flow chart, really, if we wanted to. Um, yeah, no, I, I, I always appreciate impromptu uh, talks, and this has been a fun one yeah. so far. Um, well, the Chinese Communist Party or government or whatever it is, um, I think ever since the, I don't recall this guy's name, I don't even want to, the Mao guy yeah, uh, pro claimed it as the communist uh, yeah. uh, populist oh, or, you mean Mao, or government German for Mao. the people, whatever it is. Um, do you guys know the name of the party? Uh, it's, it's, you mean the current one or the one that that started it? Both. I think it's the same. Still, it's it's something I don't recall off the top of my head. Mao Zedong. Let me see. Um, yeah. yeah, that's the one who started the communist the party. Chair, the, 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 what is it? Um, I don't think it's called anything. I don't know. The CCP, isn't it? Yeah, something like that. Pooster got it. The CCP CCP, is the actual yeah, uh, party, name. party of China. Yeah. Uh, ever since this thing happened out there, the Communist Party of China, of China. Oh shit! <laughs> uh, uh, the country has been in a very leftist communist, uh, as its name its name read, read uh, thing, and the internet is not free there. Uh, only no. in Beijing you can use Twitter or Facebook, have actual access to those social media. And I think uh, any leftist authoritarian um, dictatorship like this that has, has been ruling countries for decades and subjecting their citizens to such uh, outrageous uh, lifestyles has to be frowned upon. Has to be. I agree. Discussed. His authoritarianism, um, really, it's uh, yeah. masked by communism, really. Uh, and the thing that this government was trying to uh, pull uh, people from Hong Kong with that extradition law, that thanks to the Hong Kong protesters and rioters, was not enacted and had to be pulled back. Um, I think that's that's completely bad. Uh, the thing that Hong Kong finished uh, its ties with the UK, and now it was its sovereign own thing, and now China wanted to, hey, now you're mine. Mm -hmm. uh, 
It's completely no. Uh, but also, uh, the thing is, if uh, I think I picked this up from a random talk uh, out in the street, if Hong Kong doesn't join China, it's like leaving the the biggest source of income and tourism and everything that they yeah. have because China is so fucking big and important not only for Hong Kong but the world so saying no to China is like um, what are you doing? are yeah, you going like to survive by yourself? Type there's, shit. there's no thing such as uh, saying no they are part of China that's the part that a lot of the West don't know about is like uh, they're, they're not really <laughs> Uh, uh, like they're not choice. independent like, per se yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's not like uh, not Ukraine and, and Russia for example you know Ukraine is, is a separate uh, a separate country um, but yeah that's just a city in, in, in China uh, but yeah uh, no it's, uh, it's weird in, indeed I think it's the second time I don't agree with that guy that is talking on the other end uh, Oops, uh, it's like say as you were trying to bring up Okay, Ukraine is Russia. No, it is not. Oh, oh. Mo many countries no, yeah, from the yeah. Soviet Union uh, were Russia, quotation marks, but they are not anymore. No, Hong Kong no. is not China. No, that's what I was saying. It's it, they're they're definitely not one and the same as as in this. Uh, you know, the argument they are China part of China, Hong Kong. Right? You know, like, it's a no, city of China that. with two. Fuck that. So, the comparison to Ukraine and Russia is totally different here. Oh, it is. That's, 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 that's what I was illustrating. Yeah. That they're not the same. If, if someone does think that, that, uh, that they are analogous, they, they certainly are not. Yeah, no. And here's the problem with the, the protesters. They are undermined by the, uh, the West, such as uh, the U.S. and the British. I mean, look at all those uh, gas masks. Who do you think supplies all this, you know? Uh, certainly not themselves. Know. <laughs> they, I heard they're even being paid each day to do that. I mean, that's... Look, oh. uh, that, uh, I, <laughs> um, I'm going to bring up yet another shithole and catastrophic story, but they're your... Uh, buying into somebody else's bullshit, produce bullshit story. Yeah. This is plain bullshit. Don't listen to people that tell you that some U.S. or any Western country is supplying the writers oh, I was uh, guns or anything like that. That's bullshit. Unless you can prove it, shut the fuck up. Yeah, I was because just joking about that. Because many people back in the days... I agree. Many people back in the days used to say... No, but the U.S., the many other, the European satellites or whatever, the kings, whatever mm -hmm. monarchy you want to come up with, are financing, financing uh, the Venezuelan riots. That's where I come from. Right. That is plain bullshit. Nobody paid us to come out in the streets. We were by ourselves, and therefore we were getting c killed and slaughtered by the Communist Party. And right. the government, right, right, right. So it's top of spreading bullshit. No, yeah, that I would agree on that. I, I was just joking about the, you know, I was actually making a footnote, actually uh, supporting your argument that that bullshit exists. Uh, I wasn't actually being serious. So if anybody actually thought I was serious about that, please do not. <laughs> Dude, yeah, yeah, no, there's not right, sponsorship, right. then you are really don't know what's going on, man. It's not yeah. about like trying to like. Oh, read the media. I mean, the media is it has their own narrative, man. Obviously, we know this. It's, of it, course, it, but you you gotta be objective on that too. You know, it's like well, uh, exactly just because one media say yeah, you know, if you read the actual media from like for example the U.S., of course they're gonna not say anything that they are involved. I mean, you gotta actually go outside of that. Exactly, so when you man. say you don't think that anybody's involved. <laughs> then you really don't know how the CIA and everything works. Well, that's another. That, that's something else entirely. You know, with coups and and, and those sorts of things. Um, you know that that's that's the reality as well. But what, whether that has anything to do with, with these particular instances, uh, but the, there's a history though. 
Oh, I mean, there is, yeah. I mean, U.S. is notorious to be involved in every facet in every country. So um, to say that they're not involved, that's just like, oh, you know. Okay, let me put it simple. Can you prove what you're saying or no? That's what I was going to say. Nobody like, can prove anything. That's the point. I that, mean, that's where I was you're going, saying that Rotten, actually. They're not. So how can you say, how can you prove that they're not? All right? Same I don't buy. I don't buy into that bullshit story unless you can well, prove it. I don't it. buy your bullshit either, dude. Okay. Wow. I'm not even calling you out. You're the one calling me out, so. Yeah, and I'll do it endlessly because I know where I come from. I understand. It doesn't both matter where you come from. The argument here. That is, has no bearing. I mean, just because you're in, in part of this, let's say you're part of the riot, right? That doesn't mean you know every aspect of the whole thing. I mean, you're just another person rioting, just like all the other people in the riot right now. They have no idea who's well, this is the high mind or whatever, that you know? takes over at certain point, okay. but you'd expect that most people in, in that riot would be, would be doing so, f you know, for a reason. But actually, that's, a, that's another question altogether, too. Now, in a riot, when does the hive mind mentality take over? Let's say we have ten people who, who create this movement or whatever, and they have, you know, very strict ideals and very, very clear goals as to what, why they're doing what they're doing. So when does that cross over into, to, you know, hundreds, even thousands of other people just doing it because somebody else is? Right, and that's my point, like, at first, they start out peaceful, right? Now, everybody's just destroying stuff. Like, the, well, the, the I, I goal is like it's I'm, been shift. I'm not going to you know say that I mean? this is happening or that is happening. Um, I, I want to look at it as a whole and not individual, you know, things that you may hear reported on, you know. But... So you're saying that you no longer want to talk about Hong Kong? No, 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 we're talking about people? it, we're talking about it, but I, I'm, I'm asking, let's okay. say, in, in relation to the Hong Kong riots, where where does the cross happen where people stop realizing what they're rioting for? I mean... Well, they pulled back the extradition bill, right? So, they're still rioting, so how is that? That was the original know. goal, so... I guess, yeah. I mean, maybe it's like a chain reaction thing, like a, a domino effect. I really uh, don't know. They're, they, they're fighting against the facial the recognition thing right. that actually China is trying to pull in. Uh, so, it's, again, uh, I think we, I say this in my prior appearance here there is always people wanting to be free and those trying to undermine those freedoms right it's just people fighting to be free of course there is a thin line between fighting for a purpose or with a clear end and just rioting just because they want to say uh they say fighting for peace is like fucking for virginity. <laughs> um of course in these massive turmoil and global um international news events and things of this nature um there, it's a slippery slope. There it can is. be many factors such as the proof searching the some Western na nation is paying some people to come out and riot, which, again, I still think is bullshit. It, it uh, could be, but it it's plausible, too. I mean, I, I like to think hypothetically as well. I mean, obviously, I don't have proof of this, but... We you don't know, know. That's the whole point. It's plausible. I don't it care. certainly is plausible. Bullshit. But, no, yeah, you're, you're, yeah. You're, you're speaking on facts and, 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 you know, what's, you know... Readily available as that's just opinion, just like anybody, you know. It's like an asshole. Everybody got one. Exactly. That's not fact. It's not fact. You're saying you don't believe in that. That's cool, but that is not fact. Okay. That's well, not move, moving on with that. Anyways, um, what's interesting? I have a, another article actually uh, highlighted here about China specifically um, that I was going to get into tonight. <clears throat> specifically here, uh, China is killing religious and ethnic minorities and harvesting yeah. their organs. 
Um, yes. This is, uh, UN <laughs> Human Rights Council. Those, uh, th- those motherfuckers actually have concentration camps right. for Muslim people. Right. Yeah, I've heard. They have I've facial like recognition. This, yeah. They don't have open internet for all their citizens. Mm-hmm. And Hong Kong people are fighting against becoming uh, people on from being under that ruling. They're fighting against that government. They're fighting against all of that shit. Yeah, I still believe they don't know what they're fighting for. Oh, Falun Gong! They really okay. know. That's the whole point. Is, they're killing the Falun Gong. Uh, there was something that that came around here. Uh, what is it called? Uh, Ah oh, man, Shen Yun. So it is, and, and uh, Shen Yun is apparently Falun Gong, and apparently besides most oh, dance thing, other, yeah. So That's Falun Gong is, is, was outlawed, uh, outlawed by the people of uh, the communist uh, CPC, and uh, so yeah, apparently they were they were extracting organs and obviously killing these these Falun Gong spiritual groups for the last twenty years. And it's still going on, um, and they're you know they're cutting them open while they're still alive. So if that's the Falun Gong, which is just a you know a spiritual minority, who who knows who else they're doing it to? Uh, who who um, you know? Rob, what do they do with the organs? What do they do with the organs? They eat them. Are you kidding me? <laughs> and that and that's yet another problem. Uh, I keep they really eat them. I keep bringing <laughs> it up. There is not open access to the internet, yeah. so we cannot get to know everything that happens in there. Yeah. And everybody that keeps trying to become a whistleblower like Snowden, if he gets caught, they're done. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's serious shit, man. Totally. And and of course, Hong Kong people have a reason to fight for, because again, ever since they ended the, that. UK, England treatment that they were under their ruling or whatever it was, China has been trying to make them the part of their land, like Russia did with Crimea exactly, a couple yeah. of years ago. But of course, it's different because in Crimea, they allegedly had a, an, ex, an, an election mm-hmm. and the people allegedly, I don't know, allegedly. voted <laughs> and they annexed it back to Russia. And it was a complete clusterfuck because... We, they didn't have a uh, Ukrainian uh, power supply or anything like that anymore. So Russia had to step in to provide those services. Right. And it took a lot of days and people were economically bad, socially bad, blah, 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 so on and so forth. But coming back to the topic, uh, that's why Hong Kong people are saying no. And well, Hong Kong actually was originally part of China. That the British yeah, okay. took them away. So, um, it's like they're was that um, they're not they hand it back. It's very been what twenty two years or something or when was it ninety seven? So it's a long time ago. I mean, if they want to uprise, they should have done way long ago. But I can see where it's coming. Here, but you know, one of the, the largest the, exports the production from- of the bill is that is actually China. Be more part like China now, and that's where the resistance is coming from right now. Yeah, no, uh, there there has been a lot of bank runs. People are going to the AT- ATM to withdraw cash, uh, and the ATMs just don't have more cash. Uh, the local Bitcoin volume on Bitcoin uh, redundancy there has been breaking all time highs in Hong Kong. Mm-hmm. Uh, People are getting into Bitcoin uh, there. Um, uh, and I tweeted this out. If rogue nation citizens are using Bitcoin as a store of value, why you should not? Yeah. No, of but course there's going to be... There's going to be some serious opposition uh, from the establishment as to why you shouldn't use a decentralized currency that they can't themselves control. <laughs> yeah. You know, it, it totally if makes Venezuela, uh, Iran's, uh, Hong Kong's, uh, Ukraine, I think, to uh, Belarus, um, other, uh, even Turkey, 
if again, if rogue nations are turning to Bitcoin, not their governments, but their actual citizens, yeah. why should you not? If, if, I think many Americans uh, take things for granted. Uh, we believe that there is never going to be a leftist uh, dictatorship in America because it's so all divided and the Congress and so on and so forth. But there is always a populist jackass that hijacks the political system and just shits on the law yeah, endlessly. seems to happen to every 10, 20 years. And, and it's fucking happening with Trump. Exactly. It's just that it's the other side of the coin. Because this is a populist from the right wing, not the left wing. But it's just, it, it still is the same bullshit. Same thing, Some yeah. different flavor. Yeah, I mean, uh, I guess if you're if you're trying to compare flavors of pieces of shit, I mean, they all taste like shit. Are you really going to sit there and study the nuances? You know, we have we yeah. have the shit that came from the left and the shit that came from the right. In the end, yeah. it's all shit, people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and that's why you should become an anarchist. Are, or get into cryptocurrency, or get into encryption. Learn to decide for yourself, exactly. Yes, but become self-sovereign, self-sufficient to an extent, and the more self-sufficient you are, the less dependent on governments you become. Are you going to live in the forest with Aloha? Around I will. I, no, I wish. <laughs> you guys could live together, man. Infrastructure <laughs> is one thing. Let's, I mean, infrastructure needs to be supported by something. Uh, and this goes into a very core argument of, of, of political philosophy. Um, now, let's say we are anarchists and we survive in a system uh, of, of political anarchy. Who maintains the roads, the bridges, et cetera, yeah. et cetera? It won't be the roads. you got to walk through a thick forest. Hey, come on. <laughs> Being serious. I'm serious, man, because, you know, if you want to be self-sufficient, you're not going to be able, be able to build roads because that requires cooperation. The whole thing so about, we track like know, our nomadic ancestors with do everything yourself. animal hides adorning our supple bottoms. Pretty much. Yep. Well, That's exactly right. <laughs> you go back to hunting, you go back to gathering. So... <laughs> Fair enough. At the end of the day, that's what you're doing, you know, uh, because you're if it you're going is that away from the anarchy is right? that really so like at its core. That's, gonna, that's what you think anarchy leads to. Yeah, wow. I, I believe that. You know, uh, can lead to that. I guess. Uh, I guess. I mean, that's the that's the high end of where it could lead to, but. Um, you, if you don't want government, you don't want anything else, and you want to live in the forest, what 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 is there left, right? Well, we're not talking about nihilism. I mean, I'm just talking to Aloha too much. I, I, that's what he's. <laughs> <not. laughs> I mean, I, I would accept uh, anarchy is is more of a state of being, uh, resultant of whatever came before it, and it's a transitional period in my mind to something. Uh, to something more evolved or more suited to those who institute its, you know, uh, inception in the first place. Uh, that's my opinion, I guess. I, I don't think anarchy is sustainable, a sustainable source of, of uh, I don't know, society, if you call it. But um, what do you think, uh, Rodden? Uh, I think you're right on that assertion. Um, and I think it's granular as you're trying to hint there. Uh, I think it's just, if I have to choose, if you put all the pills on the table mm. and I have to choose among democracy, uh, dictatorship, uh, I don't know, authoritarianism, whatever, and Hegemony. you put anarchism, uh, I will go with anarchism because out of all the other choices, this you one how it's gonna end is up, going right. to allow me to throw shit at those who have subjected me 
to those things that I do not like, central banks, governments, uh, all of that. And, and you find many of those thoughts or principles in becoming a cyberpunk. Yeah, that's that's important. It's, uh, you know, back when we were all reading the Anarchist Cookbook back in the day, you know, it's uh, it kind of laid the blueprints to how uh, technology is going to affect our society and the way it's affecting it now. I mean, I don't think a lot of us realized back back in the early 90s or, or um, the late 90s, depending on what your age group is, um, how much technology would be affecting our world as it is today uh, as far as politics, um, social media, everything. Uh, it's basically encroached on everything we have. It changed the world that we kn as we know it. Um, yep. So I mean, in a way, it's it's a, a form of anarchy in itself, really. The way that that uh, you know technology is kind of lashed back against uh, uh, against the traditional pen and paper way that that we worked previously. So where's it going to end up? I don't know. We shall see. We shall we got see. got 22 seconds left. We've got 22 uh, seconds left. So, well, we got to talk about a lot of interesting stuff tonight. I, I missed some things, that, you know, but I think that uh, what we had in the middle was was good. And that's all you yeah. needed to know. It's so, meaty tonight. Exactly, exactly. So A lot of meat. A lot of meat. <laughs> well, thank you very much for having me on again. Rod and Blue on Twitter. Uh, thank you, Toopster. I love you still. No hard <laughs> uh, Thank you, Prince. Have a yes. wonderful night. Yes, my friends. Thank you very much. All thank right. you to uh, the audience for tuning in to the Power Hour here on RealLivingMedia.com. Yes, yes. Chat with us live on Freenode. IRC, we are in dash dash real liberty media dash the holy roger dash dash all coins. Come see us. Oh, we're very friendly. Pound well, that's not pound. Oh, yeah, pound pound dash dash, you know. Pound pound. <laughs> all right. Uh, see you later. Bye bye. Later.